All right. We're live. Uh, and now we're ready to brew up some ammo. <laughs> Actually, do you want to brew up some ammo? Or do you really want to do a good job at resizing your case so it fits your rifle? Bring precision. I wonder how much uh, sizing your case would have to do with uh, accuracy, precision. I wonder if there's something as a reloader you could be doing something wrong that is, uh, well, I like to say it, it, it's, it's stopping you from having accuracy, but maybe the performance just sucks. You know, every seventh or eighth one won't even chamber, right? So now what we say is I think we better go back to basics square one and approach it in a way that you guys can understand it. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'll put together uh, quite the live stream. And um, I'm going to start off with a, a story for you. Uh, I'm going to illustrate something in a story form, taking you back to when you begin shooting your rifle or, you know, um, just shooting a rifle at whatever point in time in your life. You're shooting it, and, you know, what, what are you running through your rifle? What, what, you know, a lot of guys, they go buy ammo, and it's like, well, what, what am I running? What's it, what's it mean to me? So, and then from there, we're going to step all the way through better fitting it to your chamber. And what does that do for you, better fitting it to your chamber, when you're, think, when you're talking about, um, you know, 10 bullets, one hole at 100 yards? Uh, not that I'm that guy, but I could be, and you could be. So we're going to talk about that. We have eight on, and uh, okay, who do we have out there? I want to do this is I want to um, kind of tell you a story to help you to relate this to what we're after. Um, we have a lot of new reloaders on and guys who have been reloading for a while, and can you clearly see what you're trying to do at the end of this. Big Bear 5353, it is so good to see you. I miss you, brother. I miss you guys. Stephen Royer, good morning. Tacos and French fries. We had good fellowship this morning. Brian Miller. And we are seeing you from a side angle, not your facing the camera, maybe, you know, that, but just, to, oh, I know. I have to have that there. You have to be here because you're going to read this. You're going to be coming in. You're going to be here in class. I'm giving you a front row seat. We have uh, Justin Schultz. All right, he's our new guy. Hey, we have a new guy, Philip Achar. Oh, I love that name. That's a cool name. All right, so I hope you all have a good cup of coffee. And now I have a story for you. The story goes like this. I'm going to come up and get you in. And you know what I think I'll do? Well, I'm going to remove this. I, I, I haven't even practiced this. Like, okay. We got old iron head in the house. Okay. All right. There's a thing called Sammy Min. What does a Sammy Min mean? Without getting all like uh, technical and scientific, I could relate it to you like this. Do you see this gauge? and this setup gauge. I have it set to zero. So do you remember we had Harold Farmer in the house? Um, do you remember when you were out shooting at the range? You were just going bang, 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 bang. And you got all this factory ammo 
from your local gun shop. You weren't reloading, you were just shooting, okay? What were you shooting? Well, now that we see we have this set to a minimum, what we call a SAMI minimum chamber, let's take a look at some PMC, shall we? Slightly above zero. Now, the first thing you got to understand is slightly above zero is going to bring you more accuracy. Slightly below zero, that's going to give you less accuracy. Slightly below zero means it's looser in the chamber. It's not as tight fit. So you're not lining the center of the bullet up with the center of the bore. Instead of being lined up, it's going to be ill fit. It's looser. It's, imagine it can move around more, so to speak. So, um, and that's just a, a way to explain it. You could just understand that. So there's one PMC. Let's take a look at a few other PMCs. It's about a thousandths above. Your guy says, no, 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 that's just slightly under zero. See, we were about a thousandths above, slightly under zero. We're pretty close. Very close. So that's five rounds of PMC, okay? Now let's look at some, some Federal. This Federal comes from the bulk thousand uh, count boxes. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. We start seeing inconsistencies, don't we? Okay. Now let's look at some Hornady. This is this is Hornady. That's a thousandths over, a, a little more tightly fit. Wow, a thousandths over. 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 I have just went through pretty much all those, a thousandths over. Let's just get one more random. Wow, a thousandths over. Not only are these all a thousandths over, but they're all pretty close to the same size. Remember the federal, the, the bulk stuff? There we have one a thousandths under. Three thousandths under. Three thousandths under. Huh. 
almost four thousandths over suddenly. So we just saw in the federal that we have quite a bit of gap there. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys this. I have a bag from a company. A company sent me, uh, it's got a lot number and everything. They sent me this a few years back. This company wanted me to tell you guys about their ammunition. And they said, if you do, we can hook you up with regular shipments of ammo. They were going to give me ammo if I would let you guys buy their ammo. Okay? So they gave it to me. Well, not trying to insult anyone, but I guess anyone with a, uh, a gun channel wants to go out and make cool videos and go bang, bang, and show you how it goes bang, 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 bang. They're going to do that. But I'm a reloader, and so are you. Okay? So this company couldn't sneak one over on me. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Every bit of their ammunition is way below a Sammy Min. And some of it is so far off. Hey, do you guys want me to just get a bunch of free ammo and tell you to buy this ammo? Or do you want me to show you how? Now watch. How did these, this pack of Hornady's, I shot some through my AR-15. And after being fired, it expanded. That's out of my wife's AR-15. That's how much that case expanded, the Hornady case. So what if I could show you how to do this? Take a once fired case and size it back to where you're there. I can do that. It's not a problem. Now, um, for those of you that are wondering, does High Boy purchase factory ammunition? Oh, you bet I do. Yeah, and I don't shoot it. Not very often. I'll, I'll, I'll run it. I'll buy it just to test a few, and I always keep those cases with the like cases. When I buy a factory is if someone has an incredible sale on it and the cases are cheaper than I can buy them on the open market um, or a local gun shop's going out of business and they're going 60% off and they got what I like, and I'll, I'll buy those. And um, like this was purchased at Cabela's. They had them so doggone cheap that I could buy it. I could burn it up and have the cases left over and be ahead of the game. In my opinion, there ain't nothing wrong with that. If I got to buy the cases anyway, I might as well be able to go bang them out and enjoy some, uh, what I would call some free trigger time. So, yes, yeah, so I, I do purchase um, a factory. But now here's one for you. If you're new to reloading and you have some factory, as you see how I inspected these, you can compare yours to theirs, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you this. I have my, I have the Lee beginning reloading series for 223 Remington. All of those range cases, like we're going to be looking at now, I sized all of those off of my Lee equipment 
and I ran them head to head with the five that you saw shot out of this box, and my rounds were just right behind these hornadies. And that's just coming up my lee. So now I'm going to take you into this world, and we're going to begin talking about taking a once-fired case and sizing it back to where you want it. To begin with, I'm going to demonstrate to you, trying to keep all everything put back where it goes. I'm going to experiment. I'm going to explain to you what most reloaders do. And they think that what they're doing is correct, but what they're doing really is working against them. Everything that uh, a really good, they're doing everything that a really good reloader knows not to do, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and lube up a case. And what I have is I have a resized die set up. Um, uh, hey, jo jo Mr. Johnny Boy, double lock, God bless you. I'm going to resize this case in the same fashion that most other reloaders size their cases. So I've got it lubed, and now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use my universal decap. It's already decapped. It's not sized. I'll, I'll show you. It's not sized. Obviously, it's not. It's just been universal decapped. And now I'm going to size this case. All right. Look at that. You just saw the Hornady, the PMC, the Federal, and what I would call junkyard ammo or just trigger time ammo. This was expensive through this company. It wasn't cheap. Okay. They're obviously working with once fired range cases. But we're going to work. This is a range case. And this is how most guys size it back. So what we did is one, we were sized it back way too far to where we're not going to have, it's not, it's too loose for the chamber. It's too small for the chamber we're putting in. Now in your mind, you can really imagine this case just rolling around the chamber. It's not even lined up with the hole. It's kind of down here. It'll fit to the chamber. Okay. Your headspace is way off. But another thing, did you just catch something? We just sized this back seven thousandths below a minimum, but it was about five thousandths above. So we just took a piece of brass and moved to twelve thousandths of an inch. We just took a lot of life out of that brass. So now not only is it ill fit to the chamber, but we're killing our brass. So if you do this with all your brass, you size them all back seven thousandths, then you go fire them and they all grow about five thousandths over, you're going to come back, size them all back seven thousandths under. Now you just moved them all about twelve thousandths. You're going to fire them again. You're going to size them. And when you go to fire them, you're going to have a case separation split and there's a good chance you're going to, you're going to mess your eyeball up. You don't want that. Well, what if we did this? We don't want to hurt ourselves. But if we take this and we set it up to where we're erring on the side of precision, we automatically protect ourselves in the way of safety. Okay? So we're going to set this up now to where everything we do is precise and we err in the side of safety. All right? Now, the first thing that we're going to do in the description box, you're going to see a list of items, starting with the press first, then the dies, then your shell holder, then your competition shell holder, and so on. And there's a few other things that I'm going to use that's not in the description box, but they're easy enough to find right through Brunel's. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is this, is... I'm going to talk about the competition shell holders, and I'm going to try and do this in a way that it saves you guys a lot of money. And in other words, the instant indicator on this T7, it's not cheap. 
So let's take, let's save you some money. Let's take this away. For the video, I'll use this so you can reference and see where we're going. But let's just say we're going to do this in a way you don't have to buy this. Save you a lot of money, okay? Kind of do it like the, the tried and true ways from before. So here we have the competition shell holders. What do these do? Well, when we set our resize die up, okay, basically we're setting it up to where when we have our standard shell holder locked into place, all right, let me go get my wrench and we'll just reset it up. All right, here's our resize die. And in the description box below, you'll see the link, take it to Brownells for the Reading resize dies, okay? How this works, you're gonna, you're gonna start your resize die just like that. Now, what we're gonna do Run your shell holder all the way up and run the die down. Run your lock ring up a little bit. So now what we're doing is the die body is in contact with the shell holder. And now we're going to set this up to where we have um, cam over. Well, what you want to do, wiggle your die. You see, I got a little wiggle in it. So drop the shell holder and turn the die and bring it back up to where you don't have any play in the die. You haven't developed any cam over really, but the die won't move. Once you're there, now what you're going to do is drop the shell holder and turn that die a strong eighth. Now we have cam over, you see? Okay. Hey, Terry Kreitz, what's up, brother? Now, I want you to watch this. You see the handle? Watch. That's the cam over we're talking about. Okay. So now we have our cam over. And what they say is this. In order to resize, you can begin adjusting the die in X amount, like a 16th to an eighth. Every 16th of an inch, you're going to size back another thousandths. That's incorrect. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because not all our cases are the same. Some cases are going to be several thousand shorter. So therefore, you're, you're going to have size cases all over the place. Okay, and you're going to see this. So what we want to do, we want to take and set the cam over up to where we have adequate cam over on the standard shell holder. And now this is what we're going to do. Okay, um, we're going to remove the standard shell holder and set it aside. And now we're going to turn our focus to the competition shell holders. This is how this works. This will confuse you, but I'll explain it. This one is a plus two thousandths, plus four thousandths, plus six thousandths, plus eight thousandths, plus ten thousandths, okay? In another words, this plus ten thousandths, it's going to be more generous in the sizing the case than the plus two thousandths. The plus two thousandths only gives it two thousandths more room, so it's going to crush it down eight more thousandths. The ten thousandths, it's got ten thousandths more room, so it's not going to budge the case that much. So this is what you do. 
If you don't understand that, it's simple. The best way to teach yourself is to start sizing your cases using the ten thousandths and then going backwards to the eight, six, four, and two. So this is how it's going to work, okay? You're going to take uh, an unfired case. It can, can be deprimed if you want. Make sure you wipe it down. And you're going to stick it in your case gauge. After the video, I'll put a link to the Ellie Wilson case gauge. You're going to take a look at that. Now, just so you all know, um, I don't have anything with me. Let me grab my pointer. No, I, I didn't practice this. I, oh, here, I got a, well, let me grab a pointer. No, I, I don't, I don't rehearse these things. You get it as it, as you get it. Oh, there's my pointer. All right. This is your case gauge. This is your max step. That's your min step. Ideally, this is what you want. You want your case to be somewhere in between the min step and the max step, a little closer to the min step. Now, hang on, I'm gonna help this focus in so you can see where this case is at. Now, do you remember our Hornady cases? Remember, they were pretty well uh, fit. They did a really nice job. And take a horn, uh, take one of our Hornady. This is why it's always good to keep factory ammo around. So now, what we want to do, we want to mimic that. That's a nice sized case, and we want to mimic that. Okay. Now, what we're not doing, we're not bumping back. We're full length sizing down somewhere to a SAMI minimum chamber. So, this is for our AR 15. I have multiple AR 15. So, I want a round that I can shoot through all of them. It will cycle, just like factory. If you only have one AR 15 or you want to load for one specific one, then you can begin sizing back. Um, say, for a bolt action rifle, you want to size back two thousandths. For a semi auto, four thousandths. So, if you have one semi auto rifle, then you're not going to want to size back as far as the Hornady because you want to fit it for your rifle. But where we want to be more like factory, we're going to we're going to size back more to that Sammy Min. So I'm going to take this Hornady and I'm going to set it aside. That's our example case. And now I'm going to take this once fired case. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the plus 10 thousandths shell holder. I'm going to place it in there like that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, put a little case lube on this. And I'm going to show you guys this. Take a, a towel. And screw it into your, your bench. Put a big old fat washer on it. Okay. So you can be wiping all this off as you go. You can apply it as you go. Okay. So now I'm going to place my case in the plus 10,000 shell holder. Let's go ahead and decap it. Mighty Armory. I'll put a link in the description box below. Now... I'm going to re okay, now watch this. Just for our reference, that's a messed up case. That's a fired case, and look where it's at. Okay, R range cases, odds are you don't know where they're going to be. You really don't. Okay, but let's go ahead and resize this. It's right where it, it was. That's a plus 10 thousandths. More than likely, when you use the plus 10,000 competition shell holder, it's not going to do nothing because it's got 10 more thousandths room in between the size die and the shell holder. So let's do this. Let's um, let's use let's use a another case. Let's see where this case is at. Okay, that one's way um, okay. I, 
I know nothing about these cases. Okay. Okay. Man, am I messed up. I can't believe I fooled myself. Okay. I just, I got turned around. These cases are right. Okay, watch. Okay, see this case? There. Okay, back to ground zero. And and you'll run into this. Uh, no, I don't care how many times you do this, this will always happen to you. You gotta make sure that when you measure, you have the standard shell holder, then size with the plus 10 and put the standard shell holder back. So let's take this case as our example. This case is eight thousandths above a Sammy Man chamber. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to lube it. Don't forget to lube your case. Decap. Okay, now watch. I make sure you put the plus 10 in. If you don't put the plus 10 in, then you're going to oversize it. Now, with the plus 10, I go ahead and I size it. Put the standard in. And I bumped it back about three thousandths. But now watch. Assuming you don't have this. You go back to your case gauge. It's, it's pretty close to this upper step. If you're too close to that upper step, there's a good chance it's not going to chamber into your rifle. So watch. Let's go ahead and put the plus eight in. Wipe the lube off. Try to always do that before you run the case back up into your case gauge. Put the standard shell holder in. We just bought it back two more thousands. We're just now what we're doing with the the, the competition shell holders. We're going down in numbers from plus ten to plus eight. That's two thousand. So we're pulling this back. Two thousandths at a time. See? So now what you can do, if you don't have this, now we're further away from that. That's looking really good. If if you are only loading for one AR-15 rifle, that's your rifle. Okay? Now think about this. I want you to think about this. This case won't work in my wife's AR-15 rifle. Why? That's four thousandths above a Sammy Min chamber. And this is a case that came out of my wife's rifle. So... This case is still too small for my wife's AR-15. If I load a bunch of these up and I try and power them through her rifle, some might go just by chance. Others, it's going to choke. You're going to be all frustrated. So if you think about it, like one of my AR-15s, my Bushmaster, it's eight thousandths above a Sammy Min. That's what it is. My wife's is much tighter. So if I'm going to load all my AR-15 to go to plug through all my AR-15s, I have to go back to a Sammy Min. Most of you are in the same boat. 
Now you can say, okay, but I want to, I want to have a premium fit for one AR-15. That's fine. You can size all your cases for that one, but keep them together for that one. But if they're range cases, I wouldn't really range cases. I don't really put a lot of accuracy into. I, I don't. Okay, you can put as much accuracy as you want, but at the end of the day, I think you'll find there's still range cases. So now, um, making sure I don't get these mixed up. So, so this one now, that's where we're at. We, we, we need to come down a, a little more off that. So what we're going to do... Now, let's take the plus six thousandths. Don't forget your lube. Wipe your lube off. That's the plus six thousandths. You see, I brought it back two more, two more. But if you have your case gauge, we're getting there. Let's do a plus four. Oh, look at that. Now look at that. Here's our Hornady. Um, I forget which case I'm working with here. There's our case. Now when we take our once fired Hornady that we know the size of, we compare this to it. Remember, a brand new Hornady case is right there. There's your unfired case. There's our fired case that we've sized back to match an unfired Hornady case. So when we take the unfired Hornady case, we run it up for a measurement. We're there. That's where we're at. Now, watch. This is our size case. I got all these cases all over the place. Hang on. There's that case, so I don't get things mixed up. Now, now that we know our plus four thousandths, is the shell holder that's sizing back to where we want. 
there's my number four plus four thousandths competition shell holder. And now what I'm going to do, remember this setup gauge? That's what comes with your Hornady Instant Indicator. Okay. I place it into there like that. I loosen this thumb screw in the back. And now I reset my zero. I reset my zero to that plus four thousandths. I'm going to open this up for questions after this. Okay, get it roughed in. Once it's roughed in, loosen that screw right there. Turn the bezel, get the bezel zeroed, and I'll tighten that screw. So now, how this is going to work is this. Now, on your setup gauge, don't just set this on the bench. You're going to get this mixed up with your brass. You're going to throw this away. Don't do that, okay? So now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a case, get it all lubed. I'll show you my lube in just a second. It doesn't need to be, um, it doesn't need to be decapped. Okay, this is five thousandths over. Now watch. Now you, you should wipe the lube off before you run it up into the instant indicator. Sometimes sometimes I mess up, but if it gets too gunked up, you can clean it. Look at that. Now, you're saying, well, that one is like two thousandths off. That's right. That's because it's range cases. Range cases. This company is taking one spire range cases and they're putting a Hornady bullet in it. If you take their ammunition and you bench rest it, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to say, well, the Hornady bullet sucks. No, they used range cases. So you have range cases. Range cases are going to be your best bet to shooting a lot, a lot of trigger time. Range cases aren't going to be ideal for you putting 10 bullets through one hole at 100 yards. It's not, but I will tell you something. You can get really accurate with these. It will blow you away how accurate it can be. And another thing you can do, all these are range cases. I have two five-gallon buckets full of these from, from ammo brass. Mostly, and some of my subscribers have sent them to me, and then I purchased some in local garage sales people have had. They're from all over the place, right? I can take these out and start sizing all of them, and I can take all of the ones that are exactly the same and group those up and divide them by head stamps, and you'd be pretty amazed at the accuracy and the consistency of accuracy you can get, especially once you shoot those through one rifle and then run them back through again. So now what, what you're doing, first off, with your L.E. Wilson headspace cage, if you don't have this, you can use your headspace gauge to get it sized down to where you want. And if you're really good with your calipers, you can take before and after measurements of the size of the case and watch how far back you're sizing it. If you want to take the extra step and purchase this, then you don't need this until what I do with this is then I place my uh, completed rounds verifying that they will chamber. Because I want to tell you something. Inside of this bag of cases, there's a lot of cases with dimpled necks on them. Well, at looking at some of their cases, um, some of their cases were a little ill fit in the case gauge. Why? Well, you can you can take this case, and we've got this size now, right? But in bad conditions, you can go to seat your bullet, and you can. For whatever reason, the integrity of that shoulder is lost, and it won't 
it won't chamber in this for, for it'd be a weak brass or whatever. The other thing, if you put too much crimp on a case, you can't, it, it might not fit. So just because your cases are fit now, doesn't mean after you've completed the round, it's going to fit. You st every, every, uh, this is a dummy. No, no, this is a live one. Um, every round that I complete goes right into that. I don't, when I'm reloading, I don't take a pile of these, throw them in the ammo box and go to the range. I sit there and I put them into the case gauge I, and I examine everything about that round, okay? Incidentally, this one is a loaded round. It, it didn't meet my specs, so it, it, didn't, it didn't pass. What you will find is this method here, it'll really drop your percentage immensely on how many don't make it. And there's another thing. With this one, I can, uh, I can still pull. This one I used on a private Skype. That's why I never pulled it. We, we kept talking about this. But immediately, if this one doesn't chamber, I can pull the bullet, hopefully reuse it, and I can salvage the powder in the case. But you'll find that when you're, you're doing it this way with the instant indicator or even your case gauge where you're only sizing back minimally, you'll have a lot less that won't make it. Okay? Now, um, another thing. None of my rifle cases go across my progressive press before they're sized here. What this means is, is this case has now been resized. Once I trim it and take care of the primer pocket, chamfer, and deburr, then I'll clean it, and then those cases are ready to go through my progressive presses. That means I don't have a resized die in my progressive presses. I have done all of this here. Listen to me. Think about it. We just saw where when we set our resized die up in the fashion we're supposed to with cam over, and we use our competition shell holders, we can size this down within a thousandth of where we want it are pretty close. So if you finish getting this all cleaned up and you run it through your Dillon with the resize die, you're going to begin bumping shoulders back where now you just defeated everything you did. What a lot of guys do, the light bulb goes off when I work with them and I Skype or we just face to face and they're showing me their reloading press and I'm watching them, the light bulb goes off when they realize you take your bottleneck rifle cases, you do all the surgery here. You resize that case here, and, and, and then after you're done, you trim it. Uniform the primer pocket. Remove the swage. Verify my trim length. Chamfer and deburr. Now all I got to do is clean this case and that's ready for the Dillon. My Dillon doesn't have a size die on it, no, nor, nor does my 550 when I want to use it, okay? So whatever, your Hornady, your RCBS Progressive, whatever progressive press you're using, all my cases get sized off of my Reading T7, and then they go to the progressive press. Now, here's one for you. Think, that case, now, now I put it into my Thunder's Tumbler, okay. Okay, I'm going to be um, more exaggerated. You're going to see me work a little more real time. And I'll do this with explanation. Okay. A lot of guys, 
they're going to take this now, they go to the range, and they're going to come right to their Dylan. Okay? That's fine. If it works for you, uh, I'm not arguing that. I want you to think about something. Okay. I have this case. This is a fired case, and it, it's, it's off wherever I got it. Okay? If I run this through my full-length resized die dirty, I can ruin it. Guys, they'll say, they'll say, how do you lube your cases? Well, I don't always, always answer those because they're not asking me in what fashion I'm working with the case. As an example, 223 Remington. When I lube this, okay, first of all, this is the Reading Imperial uh, pack. I'll put a link in the description box below. This is graphite. It lubes the inside of the mouth. I have a feeling Reb Tyree and Curtis Long is going to sound off in about two or three minutes when I show you this. This is my Imperial sizing dye wax. I put it onto the case. Guess what my fingers tell me? My fingers tell me if there's anything on this that's going to hurt the dye. If there is, I re-wipe it off, put a little more lube, and I'm good to go. Now, what did I just do? Right now, I'm talking with you, but if I wasn't talking with you, let me show you how I would do this. Let's pretend you're not here, and, and I'm doing this on my own, okay? Did you see what I did? I just inspected that case for cracks being smashed out around. And my fingers tell me an awful lot. I haven't even cleaned these yet. But you can clean each one as you go. And if one is way dirty, trash it. Who, who cares? These are range cases. I got uh, several thousand of these at, at no charge from collecting them where I shoot in the desert, okay? Now watch. So now, I come over here, decap, I resize, and I verify. Now that's about 3,000 under. It's a range case. Who cares? They're different, and they have different spring back. What happened is, is I just resized it, and it went probably around six or seven thousandths, and it sprung back. Okay, so let's follow through. So I verify it. Trim. I'll show you these in a minute. Primer uniform. Remove the primer crimp. Verify my trim length. I verify my trim length on every case. Because my crimps, I'm really picky about my crimps. Lastly, I chamfer and I deburr. So now this is where I bet you that Reb Tyree and Curtis are going to sound off. Do you realize all you have to do is prime, charge, seat, and crimp? What I really said is now you might find you don't need a Dillon. Dang, all the money you spend on the Dillon, you could have had this set up because now you only got a couple more things to do right there. Just two more. And I, once these cases are done, oh, I can put out more than 150 rounds an hour off this and it's all precision. Okay. The question is, is do I still have a deal on? Yeah. Because when I'm low, okay, here's the deal. I work, my job is 55 hours a week. My second job is my YouTube channel. I'm doing this. So when I'm ready to load, I don't have time. When I'm ready to load, right here, this is set up for my 223 Remington only. I'll put my powder in there. I'll get my, put my primers in there. And I'm pulling a handle. 
because I want to go shoot. I want to go shoot. Okay, but now think about it. You're on a limited income and you have a little more time. A lot of my guys, once they get the T7, then, oh, oh, please. No, please. Just slide it right through. It's my holster. My holster arrived. There's a holster in this. Oh, I just, I love Ruger. There's a holster. I'll show you guys my holster before we're done. Miss Highboy, she comes out like this. I got your holster. I got your holster. I'll show you my holster. Anyway. Uh, okay, Curtis Long just said it. He has a Dylan. He has a Dylan. Guess what he has now? He has two T7s. The dude is so smart. Pistol. On I have uh, 1750 for my nine. I have 160. Uh, 1650 for my 45 auto. You guys want to know why I ended up getting this? Because I kind of got it for like $200 after all was said and done. You would have too, right? But if I wouldn't have had this, I probably would have kept my first two Dillon set up for pistol and all my Air 50 would have came either off my 550 that I already had or a T7. Don't you know? T7 is the. It's the hidden secret of the 223 Remington. The T7 really is the hidden secret of all semi auto rifles. If I could, if, if, I, I tell guys this if I could only have one press, the Dillons would have to go because I, with this, this can do what the Dillons can't. Now, all machines have their places. I, I'm not saying a Dillon isn't needed because that would make me a hypocrite. I'm just saying. All right, if I could be just honest with you guys. The world is here to tell you that you have to have everything latest and greatest. But if you just have this, your high-tech premium for, your, for all your semi-auto rifles, and this, you can load your bolt-action rifles, your high, your long-range precision rifles. You can't do that on a Dillon. And every stroke of the handle coming off your ready is 100% precision. Rev Tyree just said it. I use my RCBS for depriming, and my Hornady Lock and Load Progressive is growing dust bunnies. And now I'm getting more and more guys. They've been running the Dillons for a long time, but now they're going. They, they, I have one guy. He, he, he shoots a lot of AR-15. He shoots it in competition, and he told me, he said, now that I have my T7, I don't run my 223 Remington through my Dillons. He said, since I've already, since I've already sized my case and, and I've ran it all the way through, it's just as easy. He, he leaves the turret head set up with the dies. And what's he doing? He he primes and he's he, he primes by hand, right? So if you prime by hand, that takes that part off the Dillon. So now are you just gonna run, you know, Two dies in your Dillon? No. Another thing. Another thing. Doing it this way, you're able to verify every charge that goes into your case. Because when you charge this, you're going to have a block and you charge every case and you can look in there. So now a competitive shooter, he, he knows every case received the charge. It, 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 I'm telling you, it's brilliant. It's, it's truly brilliant, okay? <laughs> okay, Lee, Lee Scott, uh, I'm definitely getting a couple T7s and one 750. Yeah, and I'll bet you Lee Scott's story will be he gets the Reddings and the Dillon, and he's going to load rifle and pistol on the Dillon, but the more he gets into it, he's going to say, this is already set up. Once I process it, I've only got two steps left. Just run it out on the, on the T7. Unless he is loading thousands of rounds and he only has this much time to do it. That's where the Dillon will shine. 
every machine has its place. Okay, some guys that they're that they're loading thousands of rounds a week. Now you wouldn't be able to do that on the T7. Okay. Okay. Now, now I'm going to take this a, a a step further. I'm kind of getting lost in all my cases here. So what after the live stream, I have to go through and reorganize everything. But now I want to show you this. So we've addressed resizing the case. Um, okay, this case, I can tell right off the bat, it's, it's a dirty case. And it's degraded physically. This was sitting somewhere where it was, the elements got to the body and it's pitted. That's why I handle every one of them. Very nice. That's a nice one. So now we've addressed sizing back. And that was about 2,000 slow. And so now you're controlling your, your sizing. Now, if you say, man, I, I want tighter tolerances, then you're going to go buy some new Starline brass or some Hornady, and you're going to keep those together and use them for the same uh, application, and you're going to see that tighten up. So if you want tighter standards and get away from the range cases, because the range cases, they're just, they're just for bang, 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 bang. Oh, and I do shoot squirrels with them. It's a blast, okay? So we've resized the case. What's left? All right. First off, and you can do this in whatever order you want. Let's do, let's work the primer. Right there, I'm going to uniform the primer pocket. This is the threading primer pocket uniformer. I will put a link in the description box below. Now, I have three drills. DeWalt had a huge sale. They were given away. Uh, DeWalt was giving away phony money, right? And so I was going to all, they, they had like four reps there and the store manager had money. So I went to the store manager and I went to all the reps and they gave me money. And my wife went and they all gave her more money because you know how guys always give the pretty girl. But that was fine because my wife brought me so much that I bought all three of these drills and all the batteries really cheap. But to get yourself three drills, just go to a pawn shop and get three cheap drills, right? So your first drill, ready, primer pocket uniform. You should wear gloves when you do this. If not, just ease into it slowly. That's going to square, sorry, that tool is going to square your primer pocket hole so all your primers are going to seat deep enough. You, you won't have any high riding primers, and they'll be perfectly square in there. Okay. The nice thing about that, that's a one time. You don't have to do that to your cases every time. Next. So now on your second drill, whether you go buy a nice fancy new one or some used ones. When you go to the pawn shop and you buy three used ones, Get another one if they got it cheap as a backup. So if you break one, you got a backup, right? This is the RCBS Military uh, Primer Crimp Remover. You can swage your cases. You can. But there's a problem with that. All right. If you're using all Starline cases or all Hornady cases, and you set the swage depth up well, you don't need it on those, do you? They're not swaged. It's range cases that's your problem. If you have different head stamps, you're going to set that swage up to swage those cases, but they're different. So you're going to sit there and you're going to swage all these cases. You're going to get on your, your press, whether it's a progressive or a single stage, and you're going to crush a primer. It's going to, it's going to deform it. You're going to be like, I don't get it. I swaged it. I had the same problem. It's driving me nuts. Walter Bunny, 
tune me on to this. Right there. Right there. Sorry, just blinded you. Hang on. Wait for the light to go away. Right there. It doesn't swage. It removes. It cuts it out. And that does that that cuts it to a SAMI specification. In other words, the, the primer fits perfect. Okay. I'll get you a better view on that. See, it's a cutter. It's the RCBS military crimp remover. I'll put a link in the description box below after the video. Going the wrong way. Now, if that would have been a crimp case, nothing left. And now how I do this, because my eyes get tired, if I have the garage door open and I got a lot of light, I'll look at them. But if it's closed, the lighting in my garage isn't the best. I just put every one of them on there. It's just, it's easier to go bang, bang, and I don't have to look at it each time. So we uniform the primer pocket and we remove the crimp. Now we got to trim it. One point seven four zero is what I trim back to, right there. Okay, do you see what Curtis says? Swaging sucks in my limited experience. Me too. I didn't do it very long. I said I'm out of here. Walter got me tuned on. So there's my trim. I verify every one of them. Now, the reason I do, I use the Little Crow Gunworks, a world's finest trimmer. I'll put a link in the description box below. And and that trims off the datum line. Well, guess what? You sized off the datum line. So the better job you do here, the better job that trimmer does there. If something happens, your trim length is way off. That is telling you resize it. Okay. Now, honestly, if it's two or three thousandths off, they're range cases. Who cares? As long as it gets a good crimp, you are good to go, okay? Now I want to say something. Now listen very carefully. <laughs> Don't let this bite you. It's better to have a little too much crimp than not enough. If your case trim length is 1.740, that's your target, you're going to set your crimp to that case. Don't set your crimp to a case that's three thousandths above that. Set your crimp to a case that's 1.740. That way, it'll crimp the tallest down to the shortest. Just kind of think about that. And then lastly, also by Little Crow Gunworks, this is the PPT tool right there. Our cutter heads. There's your first. Chamfer and deburr. And I got to tell you something. I've told you guys in the past five revolutions, I've kind of came to the theory on this, I go till it's about several turns past smooth. And man, do you get a really, really nice bevel. It, it is. So on the PPT tool, and I'll put a link in the description box below once again, I go, once it smooths up, I'll go two to maybe four times, and it just puts the the nicest bevel on there. It's re really nice. So now that I've done that, this case, it goes in my tumbler. And now I'm going to, so what I do, this is what I do. I just leave it set up like this. This is kind of like my, this is my automated factory for 223 Remington. What I'll do is I'll come out here and I'll put a Christian, uh, pastor on and listen to a sermon. My average sermons are between 50 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes. So during that time, what I do is I come out here and uh, I do this.
that knife. Then I'll do the next one. That seems like a lot of work. But I gotta tell you this. If you sit here and you just do a bunch of resizing, and you sit here and you just sit there and do primer pockets, your hands are gonna get really tired. So by by having my my production line, I go down the line and my hands don't get tired. I kind of get a workout on my legs, right? And here's a, here's another thing. I like to work out on my, my heavy bag, so I'll go over and I'll spend about five minutes on the heavy bag, and then I come over here, take my gloves off, and I sit here, and I go through all this, and I do, say, five minutes worth of cases, and then I go hit my heavy bag, and spend five minutes on the heavy bag, and then I come back over here, and I start over on my cases, and I just sit here, and I do about two cases a minute, so that's not a lot, but over a month's time, I've got several of these cleaned. I've got all these cases put back. But what's the cool thing? They're all perfect and they're ready. So now all I gotta do is clean those cases and I'm done. So I'm gonna open this up for questions and now we're gonna do something. Walter Bunning is in the house. We're gonna Um, now, one invite is to Walter, and I'm going to send an invite out to Reb Tyree and Curtis Long if they want to jump on. Because Reb Tyree and Curtis Long, they kind of have uh, cool stories on on how they arrived at their T7. So it would be kind of neat to hear from them. So now I'm done. If you've got questions, I'll be, I'll be glad to answer them. And uh, we'll just kind of call it open topic for maybe another 20 minutes or so while we're waiting for them i'm going to kind of i'm going to kind of clean shop up a little bit um and what we're going to do is i'm going to open up my my new holster yeah oh yeah i unfortunately i can't really have the gun in my hand because of live stream rules um with youtube and that's fine I, I respect them okay walter says he's on his way yep there he is rev tyree can't hey what's up buddy oh el viejo's out here uh, on a great day in the garage working on a videos <laughs> I, I I missed the notification. I don't know. It didn't bang or something. But we can't hear you. Oh, uh, let's see. I hope you guys can hear me. I hear you. All right, I'm gonna go out and come back. You'll be back. And Curtis Long can't. Okay. Um, I couldn't hear him. Okay. Can you guys hear Walter? How are we doing? Can you guys, can you hear me now? Hi, boy. One, two, three, four, five. Might be me. I can hear you now, Walter. You can hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing you fine. 
Hey, it's good to see you, buddy. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I'm just out here in the garage. It's raining here today, working on a with working with El Viejo, that old guy who makes videos on my channel. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you you must uh, be sending the rain our way, huh? Uh, we had a real uh, haymaker uh, last night. Uh, we got a couple of inches right here. We had five inches up in the hills above me, and uh, which is a lot for us at this time of year. We almost never get any rain after April first, which is fine because we're short. But okay, I'm going to show you a couple of things that I got, and I'll probably. I don't like to do review videos, but I'll do a video separate on this. I got four of these uh, gun cleaning cloths by Ruger. Really, uh, I've I've had other guys uh, tell me that they use them and told me I got to try them out. And when I was there, I thought, well, I'll, I'm going to try them out. Are, um, are those silicone type cloths in High Boy? Yeah, I, I guess they are. Yeah, our silicone gun cloths help weatherproof and protect against rush from uh, fingerprints and exposure to moisture. Unless you got nice, a Glock, yeah. unless you got a Glock, then you're ahead of us old guys, you know. I use those. I, I have one in my, my range box, you know, my range um, case that I take to the range. Yeah. And then I keep one in each of my, my safes. So the last thing that happens yeah. when I put a gun away is it gets a, a, a little wipe down just to keep the greasy fingerprints off of there. Okay, my new holster. This is for my Ruger uh, uh, 9 ECS. Or, yeah. I've had a, a pocket holster forever, and I finally broke down and ordered this. What do you think? Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and it's going to be easy to conceal that little 9 mil. Now all I, I, I need is uh, I only have one magazine for it, so now I need to get another magazine. I'll do a separate video on this where you can see the pistol in it. it won't be a yeah. live thing. Yeah. Man, it's like Christmas at High Boys. Huh? <laughs> hey, what are you doing there, Mr. Walter? Well, like I said, I'm working on a, another little um, video. I, I had some, some interest sparked by a few other guys um, that are now, of course, almost, you know, dating a dollar short, literally, about getting into casting. So what do I need to start? And so it's going to be another little short Viejo three-minute video on what it, what you really need to have in-house to start bullet casting. Mm -hmm. Most people think, well, I get a pot and a mold and some lead and I'm good to go, right? Uh, no. <laughs> There's that's, more to it. That's true sure what I learned. Yeah. So I'm going to try to lay down everything that I need or that I think that an, uh, a typical guy would need to get started, you know, what you need to have in the house just to cast your first bullet and do it right mm -hmm. so, anyway so that that's it that's did you guys word. know that my wife is part human part deer because <laughs> she comes out in the garage and it's funny i see her but i can't hear her it's like <laughs> that's why you call her that's why you call her dear mrs highboy all the that's time. right <laughs> if 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 i come out here it's like First off, I'm the breather. Second off, you know, knock coffee cup over, walk around, and you know, I'm heavy on my feet. But she, 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 she just like you never know she's there. <laughs> she will really like this uh, Ziploc bag. We save things like these. Ruger Ben, they use the thickest bags. Anything. Yeah, those bags are those bags are handy for all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can yeah. stash bullets in them. You can, uh -huh. you know, yeah. I never throw those little Ziploc, especially the little ones. You know, those little yeah. tiny ones that you get little pieces and parts in. I'm forever. I thought, well, I thought I'd go on gun eBay gun. and order like a hundred of those. Those would be so handy. So Andy Andy seventy nine Z twenty eight says he's going to cast tomorrow uh, tomorrow with a new lineman one hundred and eighty grain uh, three hundred and ninety uh, bullet. Hey Andy, do you cast? And shoot for 44, 44 special, 44 mag. I, I, I think I think maybe Andy does anyway. I got some stuff I want to send him if he does. Anyway, um, so I'll be doing a video on these later, folks. Is a oh, oh, oh 
oh, I, I dropped my holster and all my, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Yeah. Hey, Andy, start, oh, no. Looking, start looking for the, looking in the mail, Andy. <laughs> Andy says, no, no, 44. Okay. Yeah, he's putting up a video on the on the, the Andy's done a lot of work on that APP press. He, him and Julio both have, have put a lot up there, and uh, Full Lead Taco had one yesterday too. Yeah, Andy says it's mine. <laughs> yeah, Andy. that's the one where you can size really fast, huh? Yeah, it's a it's a great little inexpensive press for sizing, deep priming. You can yeah. size bullets on it. Um, I'm not convinced that it's. Uh, quite ready for prime time for sizing bullets um, because you got to load a feeder tube and they don't, there's not, well, there might be, there's a couple in the wind bullet feeders that will orient all the bullets in the same direction. So they yeah. go the feeder tube. It works great. The Lee system works great with their case feeding, um, you know, multi-tube case feeder and the little collator funnel that you put at the top works really slick and it's really fast. You can do thousands of cases in no time with it. Nice. Kind of neat, neat little press. And, and Reb saying he needs to get moles in nine millimeter and 45 ACP. There's, there's a, oh, Andy says, okay, he, okay, I'll go look at your videos too when we're done here, Andy. Um, Reb wants to get moles in nine millimeter and, and 45 ACP and 45 Colt. And, and that, um, guys, is another uh, piece of reloading gear that's gone right now. Yeah. <laughs> I know Squatch. Um, is getting ready to get into uh, reloading, and he um, has got his pot, but he was looking for a particular mold the other day, and it's not there. No one's got them. You know, there's some that are out there, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of them are really scarce right now. Um, I wouldn't know that except, you know, uh, I told you I was going to start messing around with my casting. Well, tomorrow or yesterday, I just went through everything that I have, and so I think that um, here in the next day or two, it's going to start getting nice. So I'm going to start start that, and I was chatting with one of my guys. He says, I can't find all the molds I need. I, I thought, wow, that's, that's amazing when they're soaking up the molds like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it This whole thing started running everybody scared, and they started grabbing up stuff. Well, you know, and maybe largely because, of, well, no doubt because of the ammo shortage. Guys are saying, hey, if I could cast, I could, I could um, you know, make my own and not worry too much about the ammo shortage. But... Yeah, because you know, as you guys know, if you've gone over to Acura or any of our uh, bullet suppliers, um, bullets are short right now too. Yeah, you know, it's not just the primers and powder. It's it's you know, um, our uh, you know new cases are short. I was looking around trying to find some specific um, uh, cases for forty five Colt. I wanted to come up with a with a few um, nickel plated cases just because I. I um, I have a kind of a little project that I'm going to do with uh, with those, but they were unobtainium too. I finally found some, found a hundred cases that were new. But anyway, I was looking around at the guys who do, you know, like ammo brass and those guys. <laughs> a lot of their supply is short on 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 uh, bunch fired proof. Okay, and so I want to talk about this before I talk about it. Though I'll, I'll make a funny statement, and you know, you got to chuckle. I wonder how many reloaders because they're bored are sitting on a mountain of a pile of ammo because they just been loaded and loaded, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. But so um, you're reloading like reloading like bad boys and the ranges are closed, man. We got to go shoot just so we can oh, yeah. go back and load some more. Which brings me to this. That's one of the nice things about a time like this. You just take advantage of prepping your cases. Mm -hmm. So then when it's over, then you can reload and go shoot uh, because uh, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of newer loaders that I think just because they assemble the cartridge, they think it's ready. And so they're going to sit and load up all the components they have and go to the range and they're not going to function. That's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for, for the guys that are just getting started out and re reloading, it's, it's tempting to, you know, once you figure out how all of these – you know, four basic components go together and you think you've got a, a good recipe going. And so you load 400 of them and you get to the range and find out they won't cycle your nine millimeter semi-auto. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Uh, and yeah. Now what do you, 
Yeah. Tacos and French fries says he hadn't been able to find any alliant unique. Some of these, um, some of the powders are kind of coming in and out of the of our normal suppliers. Yeah. And, and so you just got to kind of watch and you know check frequently and 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 see what they've got because as soon as they hit the shelves, they go off again. Um, uh, Western powders seem to have supplies here and you know at, at various. Um, Retailers, you see Western powder um, products. Who else is out there? There's a there's a couple of others that people don't know a whole lot about because they're kind of new on the market. So the yeah. old standbys, though, like Unique and Tac and Tight Group and Fargate and Bullseye and 231 slash HP30, H110, 2400, all of those ones that that, that folks use very frequently are just not around um so everybody knows tomorrow wednesday for sure i will be doing this what we went over today i'm gonna do it for the next two days um because it's good to do this repetitious so because i know there's a, a lot of guys wanting to get into 223 and you've got a lot of questions on it Is that all right? Does that sound good, everybody? Oh, yeah. We've got, we've got 30 going. Reb's looking for a line BE86. BE86 kind of a, a handy powder, too. It was sort of supposed to be the new, unique um but but it's a a useful one kind of a broad spectrum powder too. I I, I got some of that mm -hmm. a couple of years um, ago and have been using using it here and there. I need to get some uh, spirit gold dots for nine millimeters. The ones I really need is like the I really need to get some uh, XTPs in nine millimeter. What's everybody's thoughts on XTP versus gold dots? I think Hornady's really uh what, what's what's the defense ammo i i've got some factory it's got the rubber tip inside of it so oh. when it hits the clothing it doesn't clog what's that called oh and you might do a live video if you want uh let me know what time instead of me having a live stream i'll just follow along with you with the guys and i'll be in the comments so if you would rather have a live stream i can let you do it that, that, that would be totally fine. Let me know, Andy. I, I got a lot of XTP stuff floating around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of XTPs, but what's that one bullet called? Oh, man. Um, let me go to their website. Let me... You're talking about like VL, VLD? No, it's for handgun. Oh. Well, there, there's interlock. Is that what you're thinking? No. Are you still talking about Hornady or? Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll pull it up, but I'll put a link so everyone can see it. I would love to watch Andy. Uh, do his bullet casting. I, I hope you do that, Andy. Yeah. Because I'll be asking questions uh, real time, and if, if you can't answer them, maybe Walter could. And if any of you guys haven't seen um, Andy's 79Z28's channel, go check it out. Andy doesn't um, – he's like high boy. It's all live. You'll see all the mistakes he makes and, you know, how to recover from hey. the things – Things that really do ha you know, happen when you're casting and reloading, stuff goes wrong, and and Andy doesn't edit any of that. It's all live. So. <laughs> Info Brothers says a quick question on the PPT. Hi, boy. That one's for you because I don't have one. Okay, just a, uh, a second. Uh, I'm looking up some ammo. Okay. 
Oh, I, I can I, I can answer that. Everybody says, does the PP chamfer and deburr tool take away any length at all? No. 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 Okay. This is what I'm going to share this link. I really would like to find this online for my nine mils. Click on that. Go check that out. But now, let me see if the, let me go to their bullets. And they're probably wondering what I'm doing. Here, here. Um, it won't let me share the link. Or it won't let me share it on my own channel. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's up with that either. I've never been able to get a link to, to post. Okay, there. it is their critical defense ammo. 135 grain flex lock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've never um, purchased any of those. Never seen them. Never had them in my hand. I've seen them online though. You know, I looked at them and wondered about them, but I, I have, I have no experience with them either. Curtis says he's he uses XTP. I like the XTP bullet. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there, it, it shared. There you go. be what I did different. Oh. Um, now I'm gonna go to their bullets. I'm gonna see if they make that exact bullet for reloading. No, they don't. Okay. They only make that in the factory. Well, that is what I want for my handgun, all, all my nines. That's that's the number one. Uh, that, that's what the FBI is going to, I guess, for their nines. The critical, uh, what do they call it? Critical defense? Is that what it is? Yeah, nine millimeter, 135 yeah, grams. Critical duty, yeah. Critical duty. Mm -hmm. Flex lock, critical duty. 135 mm -hmm. grains. So that's a decent size bullet as well, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I haven't been able to find it. Well, any last things? Yeah, Andy says, as a caster, he's using mostly his own cast bullets and doesn't have too many store bots. I still keep a pretty good supply of mm -hmm. of, of uh, jacketed rounds around. Um, I don't know why. I sometimes just like to shoot somebody else's bullets. I guess um, at that and lead is getting hard to find in California. So, you know, shoot some jacketeds or some plateds and I've got pretty good stock of those. So I sort of mix it up, but that's, that's just me. Mm -hmm. I well, think so. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I had more room and I don't know that, that would be fun to get into for the experience, but just gearing up the tooling for that wouldn't be cheap. Yeah, and, and and Andy's Andy's working on me to get started casting zinc. You want to, hey Andy? You want to see my total zinc supply right now? Hang on. <laughs> going out for a walk every day. My nose is in the gutter picking. <laughs> you go for a walk every day, and once in a while, go by someone's car and take one. <laughs> yeah, I I got my my wheel weight pliers in my back pocket, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've had guys comment that they used to do that. Just go down the street at night, just taking everyone's lead wheel weights off. I never popped them off anybody's tires, but they're always in the, laying in the street and in the gutters and uh, at the tops and bottoms of on and off ramps um, where people are breaking hard. Yeah. That, that's where you find a lot of wheel weights. And, and so I, you know, I pick them up if I see them. I don't leave them in the street for somebody else to run over. I'll bring them home. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. So Terry Kreitz, he's a, a friend of mine, lives in my area, and he says, back to work delivering more TP for everyone, Winco Foods. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, I, I think that's about it. I think we covered some good round, ground unless uh, Walter has anything he wants to talk about or share if anyone has a question. Yeah, I, don't I, I don't. I, you know, no, beginning reloading says you can go to most tire repair shops too. Yes, if they're all closed around here right now. Yeah. Well, um, they've got buckets of those zinc well weights in every tire store. So when I'm ready to do that, I can probably score on a ton of that. But. Yeah, particularly the zinc, because most of the, the, at least down here in California, lead wheel weights have been um, outlawed for a while. So there aren't very, there's not a whole lot of lead wheel weights um, to be had, but uh, we're going mostly towards zinc and even some steel and, and even plastic in, in, in some cases. But yeah, if you get a, if you got a buddy that's got a tire shop that'll either give or sell you cheap the, the zinc wheel weights that's a good way to go because they those guys can sell them and you know to the recyclers and make a little money they're getting so they don't want really you want to give them away so much i've found anymore yeah i didn't know that most big trucks have lead wheel weights but that would make sense because they those have to be a little heavier yeah well yeah and they're you know truck wheel weights are huge some yeah. of those things are four pounds <laughs> boy that sets you up huh all right, guys. Very good. Good workshop. Right. So I, I think we'll wind her down. So uh, I want everyone to type um, uh, 223 Remington or 223 Ram, and Walter will call you off. Okay. I got a little bit of lag on my side chat here. It takes few seconds behind what I'm seeing here on the screen. Okay, here we go. Andy, 79, Z28 is out. Beginning reloading is out. Tacos and French fries is out. Terry Kreitz is out. Info Brothers is out. Curtis Long's out. Old One Guy is out. Reb Tyree is out. 76, High Boy Reloading himself is out. <laughs> How about Mrs. Hype? Is she still there? Is she in or is she out? She's, she's buzzing around the house. She's got all these uh, things she's getting done. She loves it, being at home every day. Man, she got so much done. Yeah. We both have. Yeah. Well, I'm saying goodbye to Mrs. Hype Boy anyway. <laughs> cool. Well, once again, I want to say thank you, uh, Reb. I appreciate it. I hope that Andy does a live stream where maybe tomorrow. I could watch. In other words, I won't have a live stream, but I will announce if he tells me, I'll make the announcement on my channel for everyone to go over and see him because I would like to watch him because I, in the next couple of days, I'm going to start doing that. And I kind of want to have my feet on the ground a little better. So, yeah, yeah. Good and Plenty's out. Let's see who else, a couple other guys in there. Good and Plenty, good to see you. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that'd be great. Um, go over and watch Andy. Yeah. Plus, he's from New York. Fun to listen to him talk, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, Andy right. I, I, Andy, you drop one thing; it's mine. I, I man, I'll be the first one there. That's mine, man. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, let's get out of here. We are out. Three, two, one. We'll see you guys on the next live stream. We're out.